Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we are going to talk about statistics a little bit further. So really what we need to talk about is hypothesis testing. All right, this is a mainstay of statistics and basically what we're trying to do is this is this is in the part of statistics that talks about inference right so we're trying to infer from the statistics that we gather on a sample things about the population okay and if you always keep that in mind then this should go a little bit better than if you fail to remember that okay so what hypothesis testing is is basically it has some steps Okay, and these are steps that we always go through as statisticians to try and make sure that we're covering all of our bases in terms of this hypothesis that we're thinking about. When I talk about hypothesis testing, what we're talking about is we're talking about the two hypotheses that exist, right? The null and the alternative. And so let's talk about what we do first, which is in fact, right, the null and alternative hypotheses. In words, and these words need to very much be in the context of the problem that's asked. Okay, so in the context of problem. Okay, and in mathematical notation. Okay, what does this mean? What this means is let's say we were trying to say uh, that a population mean that's known, okay, the mean of a population, remember mean is average, another word for average. So the average of some data set about the population that's known, we're testing whether um, what we calculate is true to that or not. Okay, so let's say that we were doing that particular thing. Let's say that, uh, let's say our halt alternative hypothesis is that the population mean that we're going to calculate, that we're going to test based off of the set of data is actually get different than what is assumed to be true or what is known for that population, I'm throwing lids, okay, is different from a population mean given in the context of the problem. Uh, given in problem. It's just going to get more squeaky if I don't find the lid. So give me a second. All right. So what that means is that we can, we have this in words, right? If it's different than the alternative hypothesis is that, let's say that the population mean given in the problem or that we're assuming we're going to call mu zero. Okay. Mu is uh, in statistics the letter that we give to population means, okay? So we're gonna say the mu that we observe from this test is going to be different than mu naught or mu zero, okay? The one that's given in the problem. That means that the null hypothesis, remember the null is, exa is exactly the opposite of the alternative. So here mu is going to equal mu naught. Okay, all right. Now, what we need to do is we need to choose a significance level. The significance level for the test. Okay. 
do we want to have 95, or do we want to have a 95% co confidence level? Um, do we want to have a 99% confidence level? Right? Are we going to have a 90% confidence level? Okay. How, how much do we want to say upon repeated tests that we think that this true value is going to fall within an interval, right? So based off of the 90%, 95% confidence, 99% confidence, my alpha would be 0.1, my alpha would be 0 0.05, or my alpha would be 0 0.01, okay? So choose the significance level for the test, okay? All right, the next thing we're going to do, which I'm already out of space, is we're going to compute this test statistic, right? So we're going to figure out what the statistic is that I need. Am I doing a t-test on this? Am I doing an f-test? So on and so forth. I'll keep as much of this as I can here. Okay. If I didn't write so big, it would be easier. But, you know, you do what you can. This is going to kind of take a moment. And to calculate t-tests and f-tests, you know, you can actually use graphing calculators to calculate t-tests today. But you can use statistical software. It makes you a little more dangerous, but is certainly a plausibility. Only dangerous in that you can do more than maybe you can talk about thoroughly. Which you might know some pieces about, right? All right, so we choose the significance level. That's where we are, right? We're going to compute the test statistic. I'm going to write a little smaller here. Compute test statistic, right? If we're doing this uh, for a t-test, this is actually uh, the value that depends on the observed data. So this value depends on the data set you have. Right? And we all often label this T observed or TS. If it's like a T test, if it's an F test, we'll call it F observed, so on and so forth. Okay, so you're going to find the test statistic that you're looking for, and then you're going to compute the critical value. Or you may not have to compute this, there are big tables that have these, right? But you could also calculate it as well. Certainly there are commands in different statistical packages that give it to you almost immediately. It is basically against something that's more known. The critical value, I'm going to call this T crit. I guess you could call it F crit. I don't think people use F crit very often, but you know, if you wanted to have a moment there for an F test. Okay, and this, all right, you could also, if you wanted to instead, you could calculate the p-value uh, from the test statistic, from right? That's a possibility as well. And you would state, perhaps, if you wanted to, in the midst of this, you could do two is three and state a decision rule based off of what you know you're going to compute here, right? All right, and then we're going to state the conclusion in terms of the problem. All right. In other words, when am I going to reject the null hypothesis or when, I, when am I going to fail to reject the null hypothesis? Those are really the two questions that we're asking, right? And usually people put their decision in terms of rejecting the null hypothesis. So they put it in terms of saying, okay, I'm going to reject the null 
when these things are true. Okay, and usually the things that are true are um, if the p-value is less than the alpha value, if uh, the t critical values are, uh, or the t, sorry, the t statistics are greater than their critical values, that's generally when you reject. Okay? All right. Let's talk about what that looks like. Okay. All right, state the conclusion in terms of the problem. All right, so I'm going to reject the null. Reject, I should have done this in a different color. color. Reject the null. That doesn't mean that the alternative hypothesis is true, folks. That just means we're rejecting the null with some amount of confidence level. We reject the null if and we're going to do the absolute value here because TS or T observed can be either tail, which is uh, can be positive or negative. If this is larger than the T critical value, if F uh, that's the, the test statistic or F observed, call this F observed as well, is greater than the F that's the critical value, or if the P value is less than or equal to alpha. And usually folks like to do less than, okay? But that's based off of your decision. And then the next thing you're gonna do, let's do a color for this, you're gonna state the possible errors. If you are rejecting the null, then you have type one error where you re it, it's possible that you rejected the null when it was actually true, right? Um, or if you fail to reject the null, so you don't reject the null, and uh, you actually don't reject it when it was possibly false. That's type two error. So state the possible errors. There are two, type one and type two, of which type one is as we've talked about before, the more egregious of the two. All right, and then you check the assumptions of the test. And this last piece may seem like a no-brainer, or a lot of people actually skip this. This actually in statistics, I have come to find, is actually the most important thing. Checking those assumptions, making sure that what you thought was true when you looked at the observed data and that you could run this test and that it would give you a value, that that actually was a plausible assumption. Um, that a kind of idea, the, the assumptions of the test don't mean that what I just said. The assumptions of the test are things like normality, um, constant variance, those kinds of things. So we're trying to check that the observed data actually matches the test you ran. That's actually so, so critical and something so many people don't actually do. So that is probably the most important piece of the hypothesis testing and the one that a lot of people skip. Okay, so having said this, you get a sense of what's going on, okay? This is what the process of hypothesis testing is. Until I see you next time, I bid you adieu.